Hey, Wolfpack, how's it going? I hardly can believe it's Wednesday. This week has flown by, but I still put together a fun show for you. So today I have a few things. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at what I'm working on for the next season of It's So Easy, which we're taping next week. And it's about 80 degrees out for the next four days. And I thought it would be fun to drape and sew a bathing suit cover up. So that's what I got on the plan. And at the end of the show, we're going to give away a brother sewing machine. As you know, I've had these in my stash to give away. And the last few weeks, last week I forgot. So I totally forgot. But uh, anyways, we're back on track. <laughs> so anyways, how are you? <laughs> Welcome, can you hear me okay? Oh, it's so great to see you all roll in. Hello, hello. Sending the love out today. So I think I see, this is awesome. All right, everyone. So you wanna see what I've been working on for It's So Easy. Uh, a couple secrets I can share with you and some you have to wait till next week. I will do a behind the scenes next week, by the way from the studio, but let me just show you. I'll just take, let's see. I think I, I have stuff. I had to find the cleanest place in my studio for the camera to go. So <laughs> it, it was like 50 projects around here. All right, so here you go. Well, this is one, I'll get your opinion on in a minute, but some of you saw me wearing this when I did the Fashion Sewing Club this week. This is a new top I'm working on, very fun sporty it could be dressed up or dressed down now you could use mesh but i use lace on this one the next one i'm making has mesh so i'll be showing that on it so easy isn't that fun i still have some of this fabric left uh this is i bought a whole bolt of this i love this lace isn't that a great color so that's on my site and then i just used a rayon knit it's a rayon knit for the top so that's one Oh, thanks. I'm wearing the ruche tee with no sleeves. Okay, so many of you know I've been crazy about leggings lately because that's all we're wearing. So I have found so much good fabric and I'm just so excited about this. So one thing that I made, which I'll be showing on It's So Easy, and actually in the Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon for our live session, I'm gonna show you how to take our leggings pattern and make a high waist that looks like yoga wear. So check this one out. See how it's much higher? And then on It's So Easy, I'm going to show you how to put a little, these aren't finished obviously, a little coin pocket. Well, I, I would say more of a credit card pocket. So when you're wearing these, you have a little pocket to stick your credit card in or a key, something like that. I had a pair of leggings like that years ago and I just love them. So higher waist, very fitted, very slimming, and uh, I turned these into capris. So I think I'm up to 10 pairs of leggings now. <laughs> so let's see what else. I'm going to show how to put leggings, uh, put a cute skirt over leggings. I'm gonna show how to put a pocket in the side. A lot of this we're gonna learn in the Fashion Sewing Club too, but I'll show this on It's So Easy for next season, which comes out, oh gosh, usually like five months from now after taping. So very fun. Oh, I thought it was cute too. Um, a phone pocket is so important. So this one does not have a phone pocket, but the other ones that I've made do. And I did the phone pocket out of mesh. I did the phone pocket out of cell fabric. And the shorts that are under the skirt have a phone pocket. You gotta have a phone pocket. <laughs> so yes, and so in the, by the way, Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon, I'm gonna show you how to take our leggings pattern. The leggings pattern is free in the Fashion Sewing Club. In case somebody didn't know that. And I'm going to show you how to alter the waist into a higher waist. And you don't even need elastic for this one, actually, if you don't want to. Because elastic's been really hard to find, but that's later. All right. So uh, let me show you this top here. And then I'm going to show you how to drape a simple, simple bathing suit cover-up. All right. Ready? So this one, I cut the top. You can see it's just a tank top in the front. A little longer. I sewed it together and I didn't like what it looked like. So I cut up the sides and this is what I have. And I keep just draping it until I can decide on a different pattern. And this is how I drape my patterns if I'm draping. So what I did, if you look, the sides, the top is cut just like basically the ruche tee. The only thing I did different on this, 
because obviously I left this part open. So this is a curve and it angles down. Can you see that? I'll go back here. So that's the cut of the top. So this angles down and this angles around and down. So a couple of things. I could just do a little button right there. I'm not sure that would be very comfortable, but it's a very cute back. It would make a very cute skirt. I could, where I slit up the sides, finish that off and just make it a little tie because you could wear a sports, like um, this is for workout, so, or walking or something. So maybe you have a bathing suit on. Now this is not the cover up I'm gonna show you, but this is a different one for a bathing suit cover up. If you had a bathing suit on, you could just throw this on. Don't have to go over your head, right? And then, oh, this is gonna look fabulous together, isn't it? And then give it a little tie. Scrunch it up even, let's see. So it could cover up your bathing suit. So I don't know, you could make it longer, shorter. I'm just playing with this one. And then the other idea was to have it where it wrapped around. How did I do that? I think it was wrapped around and back. But that would be a little difficult to get on and off, I'm thinking. like this. And have it go back into the seam, which would be fine. But I think I kind of like, I think I kind of like the bathing suit cover up for that. What are your thoughts on that? It's a pretty simple style and it looks cute from the back. So that's one idea. So that's one idea for a fun, uh, bathing suit top cover up and I can show you how to make that and I'm gonna show you how to make just a sarong to go around your bathing suit if you're wearing I don't know whatever you're wearing and you want something to wrap up so this is what I have I grabbed so let me make sure my irons on I grabbed some of this fabric I know yes this is the same stuff we found in the stash last week so you have a few options for this you could, all right, so we're taking her away. By the way, if you missed last week's show, I showed you how to make that zero waist top. It was very cute. And I saw some of you did that. Janet actually added uh, lace to it. It was very cute, very, very cute. It's in the Angela Patterns group if you didn't see that. Okay, so you have an option. There's two salvages on this fabric. So you could wrap around using the salvage as part of the hem and part of the waistband. Then you only have to finish the two front edges. Now that would be if you wanted a longer one. So I'll step back here, see how long that is? So on me, that would be, well, it depends how long your fabric is. That would be all the way to the floor, basically. It's cute though. I mean, that's one idea. Another idea, depending how skinny you are, you could, if this was one width of fabric, you could even have two widths of fabric, it doesn't matter, use the salvages as the center front. And then you only have to finish the waistband and the hemline. And I've done that for a lot of outfits. And this would be not a full, well, I mean, it wouldn't be a full closure. Let's see the difference. I'll step back just a little bit. And then you could make it shorter if you want. The only thing there is if you do that, you're going to need to add something to wrap around the waist. Now, you could also use two layers of fabric, like put this together so there's two widths, right? But all right, so I'm thinking that we should make, let me grab my scissors. Are you ready for this? I'm thinking we're gonna make one go all the way around. I'll bring it closer because you need to see the waist. All right, and then I'll take, I'll move the camera so you can see the hemline. Do you have any questions before I start cutting? All right, I don't see any. 
All right, so I know I'm gonna want this to go around and I'm going to need part of this to tie. So make sure you go over far enough where the sarong can tie, okay? And then this side, I need to make sure I go over far enough on this side to make sure I can tie over here. Does that make sense? You're gonna need to have this tie off. Now this could just be a scarf, a fabric too. You don't have to put darts in it. You get the idea? So it's gonna look like this. And I can get rid of some of this extra fabric here. All right, so I'm gonna just aim the camera down so you can see how I trim. Get my chair out of the way. Okay. Let's see. I don't need all of that extra fabric here, so I'm just going to cut up. I'm using my serrated scissors and it just grabs the fabric. I'm just gonna pin this, you can see. You see what I have here? A very crooked, <laughs> but I'll fix that. And now I need a little bit more for a handle. Is that what you call that, a handle to hold this on? All right, that should work. So this is what I have, a rectangle of fabric, a rectangle of fabric. I will definitely go run that with the rotary cutter so it's nice and straight. A rectangle, I have a little bit here for a handle, and then you have your hem. Okay, so that side's finished. Let's just tie that in place. Now let's check out this side. Again, I need a handle. I don't know if handle is the right word. You really, <laughs> handle sounds like we've got a lot to grab, right? <laughs> Let's just call it a pinch. A pinch of fabric to wrap around. All I know is that you're gonna look fabulous on the beach or the pool with this cute sarong. Now you have to decide, do you want this to meet where you have a little opening or do you want it to cross over? If you want it to cross over, that's a little bit different. We're just gonna have it meet. So let me just tie this in place and then I can finish cutting. There's my handles. Isn't that adorable? All right, so how much fabric do I want? I don't want all that hanging in the front. I just want a little bit. Remember, it's a bathing suit cover up. Unless you got a hot date or something. How's it looking? Good? Make sure my pants don't fall down while I'm doing this. That would be awkward. <laughs> All right, now what about the hem? Do you want the hem to be straight or do you want it to kind of angle? Now we could, depending on how long you want this, I could keep the salvage as the hem, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to just curve this a little bit on the body. So let's see. I'm going to grab bigger scissors. Hold on a sec. Where are my monster scissors? I just used them right before the show. Ah. Here they are. All right, so I'm gonna straighten this up a little bit. Now these are not serrated. You see how it just glides through the fabric? The serrated captures the fabric.
Don't worry if it's not perfectly straight because you can either run this through a serger to finish the edges or you can sew it, whichever one. I'm making it a little bit longer in the back because I think that would be cute. This is seriously how I used to cut outfits for customers. I would just drape them and cut around them. All right, let's get around this side here. What do you think so far? Pretty good? I see one kind of wonky seam here. And again, you can take this after you take it off the dress form, take it over to the cutting table and just make sure that everything's even. All right, now it's coming together quite nicely. What fabric is this? Just a polyester chiffon. All right. What do you think? Looking pretty good so far? I need to get rid of, there's one little extra fabric here. Oh yeah, it's looking good. And let's trim up these handles a little bit. They're kind of a little frayed. Frayed knot. Cut those on an angle. What do you think? Okay, so let's see what we've got going. Now, of course, I'm wearing shorts, but this is what the pattern looks like. We got a rectangle with a handle all the way over here. I did a shorter handle on this side, but you could have however long you want. This needs to be trimmed out a little bit. You want this to be a nice straight line, but let's just see what we got so far. And this fabric pretty much looks the same on both sides. Oh yeah, I would totally wear this to the beach. Looks great with my shorts, doesn't it? Okay, so I'll take your questions and then I'll tell you <laughs> how to finish the edges. <laughs> I got a pin in my shorts. All right, what do you think? Super fun, easy, something that would go over a bathing suit. It could go over, um, well, I'm thinking bathing suit because it's going to be 80 this weekend. So I'll show you a quick way. There's two ways that you could finish these seam edges. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is just run over to my cutting table, which you can't see for a second, and straighten my edges out. I'll show you what I've done. You just don't want a bunch of rigid edges when you're going to sew, finish the edges, I guess I'd say. There. 
Now, see how straight the edges are just by using a rotary cutter? So, of course, you could run this through a serger, which we did just, I got one more little, see this little bump? I'm going to go cut that off. So technically, you could run this through the serger with a narrow overlock stitch, which would be really easy to do. We did that a few weeks ago. You could set it to a three-thread narrow overlock, or um, I would do a three-thread narrow rolled edge through the serger, which would be really pretty. You could use like a woolly nylon or woolly poly in the looper to make that look good. But I have the sewing machine set up, and I'll show you. If you don't have a serger, it's on your bucket list, uh, you can do it another way. So, all right, let me just show. Every, okay, do you want to take a vote? Should we do rolled hem or should we do a rolled hem on the sewing machine? Serger, sewing machine. <laughs> oh, gosh, Charlene, 103, you need one of these, except you need, you might not want polyester. <laughs> That'd be a little warm. Although, you know, this is so, because it's not wrapped around your whole body, it would be nice and cool. Nancy, what kind of needle and thread would I use? So for the serger, I would use just regular serger needle, probably a size 12. Um, that's usually, I just always leave that in the serger. I would use regular, just universal thread in both, uh, or in the needle. And then in the loopers, I would use the woolly poly to give it a little nice finish. And I'll show you that on the serger as well. But let me show you on the sewing machine. I would, on the sewing machine, I would use a number 10 needle, and I would use just regular universal thread is fine because it's just polyester. Now, if it was silk, you could use silk thread if this fabric was silk. But universal thread will look fine. You're going to use a stitch length of about 2.5. And when I roll it twice, sometimes I change it to a 3.0. So I'll show you this. <laughs> hey, Glenda. Oh, I like your uh, <laughs> wolf pack. Hot pink rolled hem. Yeah, Janice, you know me well. <laughs> All right, so do you want to see this? Oh, lettuce hem would look great. Angela, you're so right. Okay, Marsha, that's what I'm going to show is the lettuce hem on the sewing machine. Uh, Don, in the upper and lower looper, I would use woolly nylon or woolly poly. Now, I have my serger set up with brown thread, so I'll run just a sample of fabric to show you what that looks like, but I'm going to show this on a sewing machine because I already sh showed the serger a few weeks ago. So let's go see the sewing machine here. And I have my iron on because you will need to press. Oh, guess what? <laughs> I forgot my glasses. Hold on a second. If I want them or not, they got to go with me. Does woolly poly go into the needles easier than woolly nylon? I don't use woolly poly in the needles, Amanda. I use the woolly poly just in the loopers. In the needle, I just use regular uh, uh, serger thread. Okay. So to do this on a sewing machine, and you can see I, this is kind of a messy cut, which is fine because this will kind of give you an idea of how to do this. Why don't we make this section here? This is one of the handles. Let's make this a point. And the top edge is the salvage, and I'm just going to leave it like that. Why Why uh, make more work for ourselves, right? So I'm just going to trim this so it's a little bit even, more even. Okay. So I made it, so this is the top. See how I made it kind of a, just a curve up there? All right, so let's bring you into the sewing machine. And if the sewing machine, if the camera decides to at wonky, let me know. So you have to figure out which side is the wrong side, which this one, it looks exactly the same on both sides. So we're just going to leave it. The only other thing I see is you just want to make sure you got a nice curve where the handle goes to the skirt, and I don't. Now, if you're doing this on the serger, it'll cut it off while you're doing it. it. saves saves time. Okay, can you see that? Okay, it's hard to see. It's barely there. Okay, just 
straight stitch 2.5 stitch length. And bring you in just a little bit closer here. So I'm going to stitch. What I'm going to do is fold the fabric over. And I'll make sure you guys can see this really good. Is that better? I'm not pressing yet. I'm just stitching. And watch how my hands, watch how my thumb, I use this to fold the fabric. We're going, we're stitching towards the wrong side. It doesn't matter how much I, I flip here because we're going to trim that off. I'm lining up the fold of the fabric right here with inside the foot there. So that's about a quarter of an inch, I would say. Okay. And I'll use this finger. Let me go out just a little bit so you can see my hands. I'm using this finger to make a curve, to hold, like, I'm using this hand to fold the fabric over my finger and this finger to make the cave. Make sense? <laughs> that was a lot of makes in that one sentence with a few likes. Because you're cutting, you're stitching. This isn't even on the bias. This is on a curve, a wonky curve. So if I have my finger holding here and this folding, then it looks okay. All right, hold on. I gotta turn my phone off. I don't know why it keeps beeping. Uh, I don't think it's the UPS guy, right? Okay, she's off. Everybody's dog is gonna be barking with the ring doorbell, right? All right, and just leave a comment if you can't see this, okay? And I can bring it closer. But again, I'm holding my finger here and folding this over. And again, I'm lining up the fold of the fabric right inside the edge of the foot there, and I can see it really well. Oh yeah, I could use the laser light if I wanted to. That would help too. The hardest part is getting around the curves. And again, we're going to press this out. So if you see kind of wrinkles happening and stuff, it's not, it doesn't matter at this point. And yes, I'm probably going to stitch this entire thing live <laughs> because I need it for the weekend to cover my bathing suit. I figure why not do it with the wolf pack? If you have some fabric at home, go ahead and trim yours. Get it up, get it going. And you're probably thinking, these seam allowances are not even at all. It doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want the fabric to fold what's the most natural. So if I was trying to fold it over here, it wouldn't be as accurate. So I'm pulling the fabric just a little bit. Because I'm going to trim all of that off. And yes, it'll be a little tedious, but you'll love this process, I promise. Well, I don't promise. You might not like it, but it's pretty easy. Okay, now we're getting to the last uh, handle, and I didn't curve that yet, and I want to make sure I do that before I get too far. So let me just cut this so it's a nice curve. Almost forgot that part.
Now, is this totally straight? Probably not. I would give myself about a B on that. <laughs> We're just going to go with a B. Okay, so here is from the right side. You see all the stitching. Now, the wrong side, I've got a seam allowance all over the crazy place. So I'm going to show you how I do this. All right, so I know this is weird. See all my cords? This is exactly how I go to cut this. Let's see which side do I usually use. It's the easiest on your leg, okay? Because your leg is curved usually. So when you go to trim, if you cut, just get started on one corner. And once I get started, you'll see this a little closer. I'm sliding my scissors and cutting off that extra. I could also go like this, but if you go like this and cut, you risk cutting the fabric. So instead, I prefer to fold the seam allowance back just a little bit. And if you're using sharp scissors, they'll just glide right in there. Okay, right here, there isn't that much fabric right here, so I'm just going to cut that exactly what I just told you not to do. Now here, I will slide my scissors right underneath that seam allowance. I mean, that fabric is so fine. Through here, it's not looking too bad. Now back when we get around this curve, you can see there's a lot of fabric left. So let's go down here and you'll see this a lot better. There you go. Getting some of it out of the way. So you see what I'm doing? I'm folding the seam allowance back and then my scissors can glide and cut that. The longer seam allowance you have in here, the way easier it is to cut this off. Sometimes I'll leave like a whole inch just to be able to make it easy to cut. Here, it's pretty much right to the edge. So now when it gets to little thinner areas, I'll slide my scissors behind and then just cut, but be very careful when you do that. That one looks fine. Then when we get around this side, it looks like there's quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and trim some of this off. Now, if you were doing this with the serger with the three thread overlock, you'd be finished already. This fabric is seriously fraying as I pull it. I could probably just pull the threads out and forget this cutting stuff. So if you have a silk chiffon, this would be a great bathing suit cover up out of silk chiffon. Just make sure you wash the fabric first. This is the most tedious ever. All right, are we almost finished? Goodness gracious. I'll just do a little bit further and show you the last step to finishing this rolled hem, if it doesn't go faster. Usually, I can just slide this right through, but I didn't leave enough of a seam allowance on a lot of this.
you could thank my sister Julie for this one. I'm like, what should we sew today? And she said, it's going to be 90. Let's make a bathing suit cover up. It's her birthday next week. Her and Teresa's birthday. Both my sisters have birthdays next week. And my grandmother, she would have had her birthday next week. Must be a very popular birthday week. So does that mean I'm supposed to send this in the mail to her to make one for each of my sisters? I think I have a feeling. I can tell you what, though, I'll be doing theirs in the surgery to get this done fast. All right, are we almost finished? Oh, goodness, just a little bit more. We're on the last curve. Be glad that this is on Facebook Live and YouTube Live and not It's So Easy, because if it was It's So Easy, we would have been cut off 20 minutes ago. <laughs> You're only allowed a certain amount of time out there. How are we doing? Oh, we haven't even hit our hour yet. So this was draped and sewn in less than an hour. See when you get a little handle, when you get a little hold on the seam allowance, you can hold it tight and then glide your scissors. Unless you get to the little edges that just rip off. Oh, hey, we're almost finished. We're just up at the top here, the last little smidge. There's nothing to hold on to end this one, so I'm just gonna slide my scissors up. There. All right, so. I'm going to take you over to the ironing board. Close your eyes for a sec. There you go. Try not to get you seasick. So now, pressing is probably the most important out of this. And hopefully my iron did not turn off. If it did, I'll just take a quick break. So you can see how it's a little bit wavy. It won't matter once we press. You have to have some steam in there. Use your Taylor's clapper. The iron is not quite there. It's heating up a little bit. The Taylor's clapper on this polyester fabric is great. Just make sure that you don't leave it sitting on the fabric too long. You don't want to get little scars on it. Okay, once I get this folded a little bit and get this started, I can show you a little trick for making a really tiny rolled hem. I'm just gonna grab a pin. This is my little secret. Now, it's much easier on an ironing board to do this, but I take a pin and hold this edge in place. See how I'm kind of just using that to hold that in place? Can you see that okay? I'll put it right here. Just like that. And now that gives me a third hand, kind of. And when I go to turn this, I want it to be a real tight, itsy bitsy rolled hem. I'm pretty much folding this just past where my stitch line is. Make sense? Okay, then I'll bring it back up here, put my pin in, and the pin holds that curve, and then I can just manipulate this. See how nice that looks? No pins, except to just hold this so I can press it.
the curves can get a little tricky. So when it comes to the curves, you might just want to press a little section at a time. A little steam. Use the Taylor's clapper to hold that in place. And then we'll go down to this curve here. All right, that curve looks pretty good so far. Now we're at the bottom hem which is much easier to press because it's almost on a straighter grain, almost. Remember, I made it a little longer in the back than the front, so it's not completely on a straighter grain, but it's not a wonky curve. We're on to the second curve, three quarters of the way home. <laughs> I was just thinking this would make a great gift. It really would. And you know, you can buy this fabric for not very expensive, depending on where you shop. The silk chiffon, not so much, but Oops, that one didn't quite press right away. All right, home run stretch here. Last curve, going up to the waistline. Remember, we don't have to do anything to the waistline because we use the salvage. Okay, so what we have is see how that clapper just made this a nice fold edge? It's not wavy. Let's see if I can bring this. So now from the right side of the fabric, it really doesn't matter. You could do it from the wrong side too, but you're going to stitch this in place. So back to the sewing machine and we are just about finished. But I know some of you would like to watch the entire process, so why not, right? Okay, so you can actually stitch from the right or the wrong side. Usually when I'm top stitching, I will stitch from the right side. It's just my preference, but you know, it's totally your call. Because we press this, it should be about the same amount of length for your hem allowance all the way around. I'm gonna tuck in this corner here. Let's just tuck that in, get rid of it. Another thing is if you want to stitch from the wrong side, you could stitch right on your previous stitch length or right on your previous stitch line. That's another way to do this. All right, so I'm not going to back stitch. I'm just going to stay stitch here. If you have any problems, make sure this doesn't stick here, with your fabric sticking when you get started, I just want to show you something like what happened there. If you have the fabric that gets embedded into your foot right here, start in a couple stitches and then back stitch, or change your needle plate to the one with the single hole. Then you won't have that problem. So I'm just going to start in a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, again, we're stitching from the right side. I'm just making sure that my fabric lays nice and flat. I'm lining up the fold of the fabric right there inside of my foot, so it's about a quarter of an inch hem. Or where my stitches, I should say. And because we press this, it really is easy to maneuver. Oh yes, I'm sure uh, you could also use the rolled hem foot. This is just for everyone who doesn't have all the extra extras. And if you have the machine I have behind me there, the PQ1500, you would be stitching even faster than this. Going around the curve, you might want to slow it down when you go around the curve and make sure the curve doesn't take off on you. When I get to the end, I can tuck under this little triangle finish here, just like that. It'll fold right in there, you won't even see it. And we are finished. Cut the threads from the beginning, if there were any. A couple. I had to get my thread cutters back for my husband. He keeps taking these fishing. <laughs> I keep telling him they're mine. All right, let's see what we got. Well, oh my gosh, this is going to be so cute. So you have an option at the waist because we just used the salvage. You could fold this under. Would you put this on? Or you can just leave it up. It doesn't matter. Oh, I just turned this inside out. How cute is this? Oh, my gosh. I love it. I know, Julie and Teresa, if you're watching, I'll have to make, I better just keep sewing these. So let me get the scraps out of the way. I guess I have enough for a couple more, right? So here's the back. Here's the front. This flows nicely, and look at how beautiful the hem is. And here's a little close-up of the waist. Just ties. I think it's fabulous. So that is your lesson for the day. What do you think? Would you make this? Oh, thanks. I love it, too. Oh, what color is my bathing suit? You know, actually, ironically... Arnell, um, it, I have one that has like a bright orange and that's gonna be perfect going over it. I also have a couple black ones. So I'll have to get a little lighter color. I love bathing suit season. Yes. Thanks guys. <laughs> so do you have any questions? 
because while you're, I'm just making sure I don't miss anything. Carrie, by the way, I see, I just saw Carrie on here. Carrie, um, for those of you that don't follow Carrie on Instagram, that mask you're making with the lace, she was testing like a mask and putting just a lace overlay for decoration. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. So for those of you who are looking for uh, something fun to add to our crazy masks that we have to wear. <laughs> there you go. So anybody else that has a birthday next week, by the way, <laughs> happy birthday to all of the June birthdays, especially the ones next week. Oh, did I make a swimsuit already? No, Janie, I, I end up buying those because you know what? I wear them so often when we're fishing, although this season has been a little lame for that, but I wear them out like every year. So I just figure, you know what? I just keep buying them. I, I don't buy super expensive ones. I just make sure they're really cute. That's all. Uh, how could we actually attach it to as a skirt to a suit? Now that's a cute idea. So if you wanted to attach it, well, that would make washing a little awkward. And then if you got into the water, you couldn't take it off. So you could, hmm, any ideas, Wolfpack? How would you attach that to your bathing suit? You could do like a snap, but depending on where the snap was, if it was on the center back to just hold it, if you sat back on something, that snap would hit your backbone. What about, oh gosh, any ideas? You got the most creative group here ever. Fill us in. What do you guys think? Um, I This is a polyester, Tina. Just This was just a really cheap fabric. I think I, I don't remember what I paid for, but hold on. I'll show you a couple of others. It wasn't, it wasn't super cheap. I mean, it wasn't like, I think maybe it retails for $14 a yard, but check this one out. Ooh, with this one, you would just have to be very careful where these flowers go. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't even notice these were on there. Oh, this would make a great bathing suit cover up. So here's another one. Here, I'll take your comment down so it doesn't block. Hold on a sec. And these are all polyester. Polyester is fine because it's flowy. You can throw it in the wash. You get salt water on it. It really won't matter. So that's beautiful. Ooh. And I've already washed all these. Somebody in my fashion sewing club, I think, bought a piece of fabric like this. I swear it feels like silk. I'll probably find out that it is. <laughs> and I put it in the wrong pile and labeled it wrong. It's like a crepe. Chiffon crepe. Ooh, this one is gorgeous. I could, this would be totally me. It would go over my black bathing suit beautifully. And I think I found these. I don't remember where I found these. I'm always shopping for fabric, but two places off the top of my head would be Fields Fabrics in Michigan and Vogue Fabrics. Those are two um, that I end up shopping in the store quite often. And those were in the store purchases because I don't have, I only have a few yards. How many yards for a wrap? Marcy, what I would do to know how many yards, because this is the salvage, right? So measure around your body and then add some extra for the tie. So measure around your body and then extra for your tie. So say that's like eight inches times two. So go add like 16 to 20 inches for the tie plus one wrap around your body and then you're good. And um, you guys, some of you had rolled in later, and if you want to watch this, uh, save this to your page, or you can come back and watch later on my Facebook or YouTube channel. Oh, Susan, that did have Arnell written all over it, didn't, didn't it? Yeah. I'm just going to post that up because I saw somebody ask about the Fashion Sewing Club. We actually have a Fashion Sewing Club meeting today at 4.30. I screwed it up. I thought it was 4, but it's 4.30. You're welcome. Do you see you have dots on the butt cheeks on the one you have made? Oh, Christina, did I really? Oh, I sure do. Fabulous. <laughs> but I also have dots up here. <laughs> what are you going to do, right? 
Um, it's a little bit below the butt cheeks, and there's some more down here if you look. So I think we'd be okay. <laughs> I could always turn this a little bit and make it like a kind of a side wrap. Let's see if that is that better. This now I just have like weird butt cheeks. <laughs> Somebody always notices, what would I do without you girls, right? <laughs> well, diamond butt cheeks is what it is then, I guess. <laughs> Just no big flowers. That you got to stay away from the flowers. <laughs> Perfect, Janet. I'll put it on the side. Okay, so let me, you guys ready for a winner? I'll check to see if you have any more questions, but let me look up the winner for the week. <laughs> Marcia says better. Oh, how do you save it to your... So, Marcy, save it just um, on the post here. Click share, and you can share it to your timeline. And if you can't figure out how to do it when it's live, as soon as it's not live, if you just come back to my Angela Wolf page, you can share it that way, too. <laughs> oh, everyone likes the side wrap. Yes, yes. Okay. Oh, Dan, you're so cute. All right, so let's see. We are giving away, in case you didn't know, we still have some more Brother Soy machines to give away. We had a couple weeks where we didn't, uh, we weren't doing live, so we're back. And let me just draw the next winner. Winner for the week. Oh, thanks, Kay. No way. You ran into Wolfpack members in Wilmington? That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Let me just see here. It always takes me a minute to find. They put it in a new spot, so. Individual. So some of you asked where to go for this drawing. It's on my it's on my website, Angela Wolf Patterns. Uh, let's see. No, it's on a uh, fashion sewing with Angela Wolf, I think is what it is. And it's on my blog. It's on my website. Here you go. Any of those, you can find this. I'll post a link here, and then now we're doing the drawing. We still have quite a few machines to give away, so this is not the last week. But because we're not doing Friday shows anymore, I thought I would just do it on my usual Wednesday show when you all are here. And I was supposed to do it last week and I completely forgot. Uh, would that fabric be warm for a scarf? Pam, that fabric would, um, it really would not. I mean, polyester is always warmer than a silk chiffon or something like that. But it, it's very airy. It's a very, um, it's a loose wee fabric. I, it's hard to describe. I think, yeah, you would like it. I'll see if I can find the exact name of the fabric. That might help. Uh, nope, Tina, if you signed up once, uh, you're in, but you're more than welcome to sign up every day for more entries. All right, so I'm just looking it up here. <laughs> oh, Colleen, is it hot in Minnesota? Last thing I thought, last thing I saw there, it was uh, snowing up there. Okay, so this is what we're giving away, just for the record. One lucky winner is going to win this week. The brother, it's the XR3340. All right, so good luck. Good luck, good luck. And... Drawing one winner, and you get an additional chance if you referred friends, and you also get additional chances if you entered each day. <laughs> oh, thanks, Dolores. It's drawing. There's so many entries, it's taking forever. <laughs> this is... um. 
my rouge tea. I just left the sleeves off. Okay, hold on one second, guys. It's bringing up last couple weeks winners ago. So let me just <laughs> you can't have the same winners from last week. That would not be fair. Okay. No, we're drawing new ones. I think the contest is confused because I just keep drawing new people. <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, we're going to draw a winner for the sewing machine and then one random person from today's show at the end of uh, at the th this evening i'm going to pick one random person that will get a free uh one month to the fashion sewing club which means you get the free leggings pattern which is in there until the end of june originally we we're only doing it till may but we're still sewing leggings so anyways so you'll see that at the end of the day i'm not going to draw it now but uh but for the sewing machine i'm drawing right now if you made a comment today, you'll be entered into the Fashion Sewing Club drawing. All right, make the draw. Come on. Hold on, hold on. Goodness gracious, how could it possibly take this long? Maybe the internet's like that. like watching grass grow. This is so weird. It's like frozen. For real frozen. Well. Okay, here we go. Whew, scared me for a minute. <laughs> All right, the winner is, let's download the winner badge. See who this lucky winner is. Congratulations to Kathy Larson. Congratulations. Well, it took forever. My goodness gracious. You must have really been really lucky. <laughs> so congratulations. Let's see if it says, um, it doesn't say where you're from on here because that's on a different page. So Kathy, congratulations. If you're on here, say hi. That would make it even better. <laughs> And I will email you because then you give me your information and brother will ship out your machine. So congratulations, everyone. Sorry it took so long. Oh, my gosh. It was like the software just froze. <laughs> so congrats, everyone. Uh, I hope you had fun today. I will see the Fashion Sewing Club this afternoon. Otherwise, the rest of you I will see next week. So feel free to join me uh, on social or in the Angel of Patterns group. All right, everyone. Have a great week and happy sewing.